want to preach to the one tonight Just want to tell my tale When the sun will rise tomorrow It'll shed light on some facts from hell Clouds are floating in the sky Shift the mood so fast Like on the streets of Jerusalem Where the quiet's not meant to last I'm gonna find you tonight I'm gonna count for one, two, three I'm gonna feel the peace within me With you right here next to me I was born into this reality I was brought up with a war It doesn't mean I must accept it don't want to fight no more Young people from all over Stray away and cross the lines It's a dialogue that we're seeking And we're running out of time I'm gonna find you tonight I'm gonna count from one to three I'm gonna feel peace within me with you right here next to me oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna find you tonight I'm gonna count from one to three I'm gonna feel the peace within me With you right here next to me I'm gonna find you tonight I'm gonna count from one, two, three I'm gonna feel the peace within me With you right here next to me With you right here next to me With you right here Next to me Thank you. It's a real honor to be here, be part of this uh, wonderful day, listening to so many inspiring stories and discoveries. My discovery is uh, just the power of music, really. And it has taken me 38 years of a career to really understand and to bring it forward and to use it, not just here in Jerusalem, in Israel, in the Middle East, but wherever I go. I don't mean to fix the world and I don't think that I'm going to change the world at all. I'm going to change my world and this is what makes me happy. I started my career 38 years ago. I started um, just by playing love songs. I still play love songs. But it's those places where I play those love songs that make a difference for me. And I think and I hope and I try to make a difference on others as I entertain and play in some impossible situations, could be by bedside in a hospital, could be in a war zone, could be just in an accident area, or just some bereaved people and parents and friends. But um, this story that I want to tell you briefly, which belongs to, um, to an album actually, and this song that I just sang, which is called One to Three, is the first song that I wrote for this album. It's an album, it's called East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem. It wasn't really the name that I, uh, that I thought this would be, but it's how it happened and how it worked out to be. I've been working all my life, other than just besides doing music, and playing in manifestations, being socially active. But I never talk about it, I never really recorded it, never never really wanted to profess about it or brag about it. But this is a time when I felt that I, I could and I had to. I've been working here in East Jerusalem for the past 16 years, since 1999. I don't know if I should call it work. Most of the time, we, me and my friends, who are very prominent Palestinian musicians and artists, uh, I don't think we play music most of the time. We have coffee. We have a lot of kebab. 
a lot of salads, a lot of downtime. Most of the time, we just hang out. And I'm always ready with my guitar to sit and play, but there's also something that you learn about building a relationship, and that is building a relationship, caring about those who you're with, listening to them, laughing, making stupid jokes, even in the most awkward situations, of, of which there are so many to be had here in the Middle East. We've been through intifadas, we've been through wars, and we've always kept together. I've always come up from Tel Aviv, which is my home, driving into East Jerusalem, feeling the safest I could ever feel amongst my friends and my peers. 16 years of this friendship, and calmly, and actually in a very Middle Eastern fashion, which I think the motto of it, somewhat of like the Spaniards, who I've learned to know over the years, who always use the manana term, as to don't rush, it can do it tomorrow. Well, here in the Middle East we say, in Arabic one says, shway, shway, slowly, slowly, one step at a time. See, as an Israeli, I want to take it all at once. I have an idea, I want to have it, have it happen the next day. But that's not the way things are. It's not only about Palestine or Israel, Middle East. This would be the same about any indigenous people around the world. Ancient people who have a much longer time to figure things out. So about four years ago, one of my friends, a Palestinian musician, said to me, so David, when are you going to bring a project of yours together that we talk about so many times, ever so often? I was just waiting for that. I, I thought I was the one who had the burning fire in me to get it happening. Well, he didn't finish that sentence and already my head was working in triple mode. I was running in my head, how do I do it? So I started writing songs. I told him, don't worry, I'm going to bring a production here into the studio. And I started writing songs, the first of which is the one I opened this conversation with, one, two, three. And then I, started, I wrote more songs, and all of them came out in English, and all of them were telling a story, some, to some degrees a personal story mixed with love, to some degrees anxiety, anxiousness, wanting to see the end to war. I don't know how and why it so happened. But then I had to recruit and bring the musicians and the production into place. And I thought, you know, that the music would be the biggest obstacle. Now, all these years that I've been out here in East Jerusalem with my Palestinian friends, it was just me from Tel Aviv, sometimes my kids, my wife. But I was alone. None of my musicians ever really accepted an invitation. Or they were rather reluctant to come or they found that they were busy doing other things. But this time, as I was uh, progressing with this production, I thought, okay, let's tackle the first hurdle. Let's see if my Israeli band would come from Tel Aviv for once and see what I see, feel what I feel, and experience this wonderful place and the camaraderie that can be built and that can be a bridge and that can make us happier and feel safer with each other. So I, on the way to a show in a scrammed van, as I was portraying to my friends what music I was writing and that I'm about to go to the studio to produce the next album and I could see that their ears were perked and they were really eager to be part of it but I was not inviting them yet I just got their interest all uh, focused a day later on another trip to a show I told them you know I'm thinking of inviting you guys to this uh, production and everybody's yeah so cool well, we can't wait to do an album once again with you I said, yeah, but, you know, we're going to do it in um, the studio in East Jerusalem. It's a Palestinian studio. And right away, the conversation went elsewhere. Suddenly, we were talking about general news issues and just nerve-wracking stories that were not of interest to me. Anyhow, I realized I'm going to have to work on it a little, uh, a little longer. Following day, I'm asking him, okay, so I'm thinking of really booking the studio now. I'd like to have you guys come. He said, well, suddenly, and for the first time, See, we're a bunch of men in, in this band of mine. And well, rock and roll is supposedly tough guys. And suddenly there's, um, well, okay, um, unanimously, uh, we're going to ask our wives. <laughs> okay, tough guys. Well, the next day I wait, and I'm at so? I know that we're in a cramped uh, van. There's no, no, one, no one can get away here. 
And they say, well, the wives are kind of reluctant, you know. You know, they don't want to be left alone just with the kids. So I'm saying, wait a second. First of all, I'm going to promise you we're going to do it in eight days. Normally, an album can take weeks, months. I said, we're going to do it in eight days. The only reason I said eight days is because if I'd said a week, nobody would believe me we could do an album in a week. Eight days, that sounds like a real, you know, affordable and relaxed time to make an album. So they said, okay, well, well you know, we'll ask again. I said, no, no, just tell your wives that they're welcome to come. There's a wonderful hotel nearby and I'll take rooms for everyone. So the wives, the next day, the message that I got was they, that there was nobody who could take care of the kids. I said, what, in-laws, parents, cousins? Bring them too. Just bring the whole neighborhood. Make, let's make it into a real event. Anyway, sure enough, I got them to commit. Now I had to get a, a producer. And I thought if I'm going to get a producer, it better be somebody, maybe an American one, because it's all in English. I wanted to be an Americana, more, more American-flavored, internationally-flavored. So I started making lists, and I thought, okay, if I'm going to turn to every producer I want, most of them are going to say no because they're not comfortable coming to Israel because of the boycott. I'll go to the most extreme one first, the one who I respect his views, but, and I know he's a hard one to crack. So I called Steve Earle. He's one of the most respected singer-songwriters and opinion makers and, uh, and a real activist. I called him first. I knew he was going to be off the list immediately. I didn't finish the sentence explaining him what I want to do, bring Israeli and Palestinian musicians in the studio, East Jerusalem. He said, hey man, I'm on. When? Just tell me. I said, wait, I don't even have a budget. He said, forget the budget. I'm just coming. So now I had him. So I announced to the Israeli musicians, okay guys, we're on. And I set the date for January 20th, 2013. Now I had to convince my Palestinian musicians. Now this was a bit of a hurdle. Some of them come under a lot of pressure. So I figured even if they don't come, I'll just be there. I'll be there with my musicians. But what I will do is I will bring Israeli and Palestinian chefs who will make us incredible banquets every night with Michelin food, superb Israeli wine, even whiskey for those who really want to drink and just get loosened up. And you know what? After the first night when we had over 100 people around the table, including the the film crew, because I made a film out of it, under the same name, East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem. We had all the musicians, the engineers, and the waiters, and then the friends, and friends of friends, and family, and wives, and children. Everybody was there. I almost booked an entire hotel. And we spent eight days and eight nights, and those Palestinian friends came. And sure enough, after a couple of glasses of wine, some good food, walked into the studio, and we started playing together. And eight, years, eight days later, lo and behold, I had my most beautiful album recorded together with these people. It was like a miraculous moment. It was as if we had created a utopic bubble in our world. And now all we had to do is go ahead on with it and sing to the rest of the world, which is what I'm doing now, traveling around the world. Thank you so much. It's very inspiring and the most important thing for me was to inspire others to dare, to go over that threshold. Don't be afraid. I don't know if you're a doctor, I don't know if you're an architect, a masseuse, a poet, a philosopher. Just engage. Engage with our neighbors, with our friends across the street, across the wall, across any place, whether you're in Israel, Palestine, whether you're in Colombia, whether you're in Mexico, whether you're in the Latin quarters in some, you know, so, so to speak, a bad neighborhood. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to cross over. We're only people, and everybody wants the same thing, is to feel safe by knowing each other or feeling each other out and knowing what to watch out for. Don't believe the stories. Make them yourselves. <laughs> And I started with the most recent song that I recorded. I would like to perhaps conclude this part of mine and perhaps the entire event. I believe I'm concluding the event with the first song I ever recorded. This is a song I wrote 
in 1977, 38 years ago, was November when the President Anwar Sadat of Egypt set foot on Israeli soil for the first time. Watching this happen, the most unbelievable moment for my generation and others, my parents' generation, my grandparents, and I was with my good friend, Israeli poet, Yonatan Geffen, watching this as he was writing down feverishly this poem and then handed it to me. I said, why don't you write music as if saying, do something with your life, you know? What are you sitting there just watching? So I wrote music to it. He gave me two days. And hence I wrote this song, which is called Things Will Be Better, as we say, Yetov. האביב חלף עבר לו, מי יודע אם ישוב. הליצן היה למלך, הנביא נהיה ליצן, ושכחתי את הדרך, אבל אני עוד כאן, ויהיה טוב, יהיה טוב, כן. לפעמים אני... אז הלילה, או הלילה, איתך אני נשאר. ילדים לובשים כנפיים, ועפים אל הצבא, ואחרי שנתיים הם חוזרים ללא תשובה. אנשים חיים במתח, מחפשים סיבה לנשום, ובין שנאה לרצח, מדברים על השלום, ויהיה טוב, יהיה טוב, כן, לפעמים אני נשבע. אז הלילה שם למעלה, בשמיים, עננים נוטים לעוף, ואני מביט למעלה, ורואה מטוס חטוף. ממשלה של גנרלים מחלקת את הנוף, ושלהם אלה שלנו, ולא רואים את הסוף. או הנה בא לפעמים אני אז הלילה, או הלילה, איתך אני נשאר. Well, as I said, uh, this song was written 38 years ago. Uh, well, I've been stuck with it for 38 years, gotta say that. Uh, by my real... Um, But as with folk songs, you know, um, they, ch- they tend to, um, to expand and change with times. Every time there was a, a peace process moved to a, a positive moment, I, I knew I, would gonna, I was going to get a, a new verse from my friend Jonathan Geffen, who's still prolific in writing. And, um, and so there's endless, I mean, 38 years, you don't want me to sing all the verses because we'd be here... Till sunset, which is something I'm used to, but um, not with one song. Uh, so I'd like to conclude with one verse that I think sums it all up. 
And this one says that we shall learn to live together under the olive trees. And that children will grow up knowing no more war, no terror, and no frontiers. And that fresh new grass will grow over the graveyards for love and peace. For after a hundred years of war, we haven't and will not lose hope. Hold me, mad. לחיות ביחד. בין חורשות תצאי, זה איתי. ילדים יחיו בלי פחד. בלי גבולות, בלי מקלטים. על קברים. העשב לשלום ואהבה Yom Chatham 